The following video is brought to you by the Cop Block Network. If you believe that badges don't grant extra rights, then consider donating just $1 a month to the Cop Block Network. Together, we can further the police accountability message. Visit copblock.org slash network for more details. Welcome in. Yeah. You seem to be like the police chief, huh? Uh, yeah, I've been called that a few times. Yeah? So how about filming police officers? Is that all right to do? Well, as long as you do it in a situation where it counts, when we're doing the right thing, you're seeing a great city, one of the safest city in America. We're proud of what we do here. It's good. So do you uh, just target more folks with crimes with victims, right? Not like... We don't target. We, you know, we identify people who are involved in crime, and we make it very clear to them they don't want to do that here. And right. Those, you see people walk around and have the freedom to roam the streets and engage and take a advantage of festivities and the venues here, we encourage that. Well, that's cool. Um, what about like, I hear like people being rushed off the streets around bar time, like like lined up with like pepper spray guns and tear gas. Hey guys, I just wanted to say, I 100% yeah. right, You guys are the reason this world is the way it is. I love you, I swear to God I do. I, I thank, thank God you're here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It says it all. Yeah. It's a. Uh, there are some valuable things to the service of policing, but there are some things that come with uh, the top-down control of policing that kind of causes more harm than good sometimes. Would you think? I think what that is, people police themselves. You never need a police. You really do it for. You would police say that police people should police themselves. I think you have, you have a certain amount of personal responsibility goes along with that, don't you? I totally agree. That's that's really why I say like some people think that I hate cops, but I actually uh, really want to see like a better society altogether, and that yes, they could really eliminate a lot of your pressures by taking on with freedom comes a large amount of responsibility. The key to that is making sure you have relationships, develop friendships with people in the community before things happen. Right. You have a good rapport with people in this town. And that's what happens. So how about like some things like, you know, a lot of the victimless crime stuff that maybe creates tension between police and well, people. Like where do you stand on some of those? Means you choose to be a victim, right? No, a victimless crimes would be like, you know, like a possession of marijuana or like well, seatbelt tickets, you know? Prostitution, gambling, some amount of drugs. But you see, choose to use it. Yeah, you're right. Though. Right, so it's victimless. And like you guys spend a lot of time like combating a war on drugs that like doesn't really have a goal, well, right? We believe in the community court system. We believe that a lot of these things are so in nature. Maybe I'll be handled that way. But, I mean, do you try to work out some of those things? Like, hey, maybe we shouldn't. Like, you know, some states have legalized certain drugs. We believe Does that, that help? the courts have to make a decision. The legislature may have to make a decision. But we are clear that we want we don't want to give people unnecessary charges. So it's about corrective measure. And if you self-police, you don't have those challenges. Well, you could. I mean, I don't think a lot of them, a lot of them would be non-issues, right? Like, who would ever arrest somebody for having a dime bag of weed? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do self-policing. Well, as you stated, it's a, a societal determination as to what it is they want to see in government. Our job is to enforce the rules and the laws and make sure people are safe. Right, but sometimes if the laws are bad, wouldn't you say like, "Hey, we shouldn't do this one today"? Or like, exactly. officers got it, but they have, you guys have discretion. You know, it's cool. Like sometimes you can be like, this isn't that big of a deal in this circumstance, we're just going to... If we all live to avoid the criminal justice system, we'll have to worry about that. Well, that's true. All right, well, we're going to be out. My name's Ademo. David, take care, man. Take care. I don't know if you want to shake my hand too, but it's nice to meet you. Take care, man. Yeah, thank you. We'll be out and about, so hopefully no one uh, gets upset with us. And we're just trying to hold everybody accountable, not just uh, folks in shiny badges. Have a conversation when you catch them doing it wrong, and have a conversation when you catch us doing it right. We'll all be fine. Hey, we do. I just wrote a blog at copluck.org about how the police in... Arizona did a great job catching that guy. You know, I just wish that when the when the criminals were guys wearing costumes that they would act the same way. Because sometimes that's not always the case. When cops do wrong, they don't really get held to the, they don't ever face the justice system like we do. Well, I, well, I beg to differ. I can tell you some things we do to make sure our police officers understand the policies and the rules of eight. Well, I appreciate it. I, I hope that's true because I, I haven't done much uh, research into Indian, so maybe if I haven't heard about it, it doesn't happen well, you, here. You, well, if you don't hear about it because it doesn't exist in the way you may have seen in other places. This is a good call that. Well, that's good. Alrighty. Well, thanks again for your time. We'll be out and about. And you were Chief uh, Heighton? Height. Height. Oh, H-E-I-G-H-T? H-I-T-E. Yep. Okay, thank you.